Good morning. This is Dylan Jovenet with Behind the Markets. Happy Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, April 30th. Today, I want to talk about something I have not been talking about a lot lately, and that is the biotech sector and really one company in particular. First of all, I decided to talk about it because I read a big announcement in the journal the other day that Merck is going to be spending a billion dollars to manufacture its key drug in the United States, its big blockbuster winner, Keytruda, which is great. And this is part of Trump's, President Trump's goal, especially of bringing critical uh, manufacturing back to the United States. And there are a few things more critical, in my view, than pharmaceuticals. Another one would be weapons, et cetera, et cetera, drones, weapons, things like that. Those are very critical. National security, they have to be brought back. So I was very excited to see Merck's announcement they're going to be building a plant. And what they're doing, again, is they're going to be working on, they're going to be manufacturing their big blockbuster drug, Keytruda. Keytruda is a game changer. I think I've talked about it before. I know I have. And it's so big that it's responsible for literally half of Merck's revenue. And just to give an idea of how big it is, last year, it generated $29 billion in sales. It's unbelievable. It's actually the biggest selling drug of all time. And it'll keep that title until Eli Lilly and Ozempic, Novo, really knock it off with these weight loss drugs. But this cancer drug, Keytruda, is the biggest selling drug of all time. And some of you have interacted with it, have had to take it. And Keytruda is what we call a checkpoint inhibitor, okay? Basically what it does is, and I always think of inhibitors as like off switches or door stops, actually. They're kind of blockers. They block things from happening in the body. And in the case of Keytruda, it basically keeps T cells from attacking other cells in the body. Very important. They put a doorstop. It's really, gosh, it's like blocking communication. So they don't communicate with each other, telling them what to do. And it does this by attaching itself to uh, PD-L1, which is a protein on many normal cells and cancer cells. So when it does this, it basically tells those T cells to leave the other cells alone. Now, again, Keytruda has been killing it since 2014. And as you can imagine, there have been other companies that have tried to knock Keytruda out. Remember something, business is war for money. That's how I've always seen it. Keytruda has this kind of amazing castle that it can defend because it's on patent. First of all, its actual stuff is on patent until 2028. So basically, they have three, four more years of making Keytruda. But other companies have tried to get a piece of that $29, $30 billion a year in sales. And other companies have tried. Quite a few other companies, they want to break into that market. They're trying to attack that castle. One, for example, has been by genes Temibra. I don't know how to say that. I've never been able to pronounce that drug right. Tevimbra. But uh, they've tried to get in there. And that they have an effective checkpoint inhibitor, PD-1 drug, which has been very good for them, doing about $600 million in sales. But there's one company that we've really been focused on that actually posted, I didn't recommend them until they were able to post phase three results that were better than both Keytruda and Bygene's drug. So basically, this company is still cheap and it just posted better results than actual Katruna and actual Bygene's drug, which is on the market already doing 600 billion itself. <clears throat> so now what's interesting, and this has been an area that we've specialized in biotech in center for a very long time. We have always, not always, but <clears throat> we've had a lot of luck. We've had a lot of success, whatever you want to call it. I always believe luck is the byproduct of a lot of hard work, but we've had a lot of success in recommending companies that have blockbuster treatments that can attack a big franchise because now this company is poised to go after Merck's Keytruda franchise with a better drug. And it's poised to knock Bygene out of the market because it has a better drug. Doctors will prescribe the better drug, period. They want to save lives. If you have a drug that helps 40% of people on the market, and this one could help 45% of people, you're going to prescribe this drug, period. Now, if you are Pfizer or Amgen 
or Glaxo or another big pharma company or Eli Lilly, and you want, you've been looking at Merck, you've been watching them, jealously watching Merck make that $29, $30 billion a year, especially a company like Pfizer, which hasn't had a hit since the COVID days. If you've been watching a company like Merck make all this money, you're saying to yourself, gosh, we could muscle our way onto Merck's cancer franchise, Keytruda, maybe get 10, 15 billion, $20 billion slice of Merck's franchise, a Merck's Keytruda franchise. And we have a company that, that looks like a super attractive takeover target for that very, very reason that it allows another big farm. It's either going to release its drug, assuming it gets FDA approval, which again, it's gone through phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials. All the numbers look great. The next thing is FDA approval. But assuming it gets FDA approval, then what you have is a company that is a super attractive takeover target for all the other companies, the big pharma companies that want to muscle in to merch very lucrative $30 billion a year cancer franchise. So there's a lot of exciting stuff here. And the biotech sector is taking it on the chin. We're in a bear market in the S&P, but the biotech sector entered a bear market a little bit earlier. And it's turned these companies, some of them, into absolute bargains. And one thing I've learned about being an investor all these years is if you don't buy a stock when it looks absolutely terrible, you're never going to buy a bargain. But this stock doesn't look terrible. It looks like it wants to go higher. Anyway, that's all I have. Have a wonderful day. I will speak to you tomorrow.